In this segment of the Turtles Padlock Project, I'm going to talk about how psychology is relevant to music. Simply put, music couldn't exist without psychology. Musical experience depends entirely on psychological processes, and successful musical performance takes advantage of and depends on mechanisms of learning and memory uh, that uh, psychologists have uh, been studying for well over 100 years. As you might notice, this time I'm not holding my viola, but I'm holding a heavy book. <laughs> this is a uh, uh, introductory psychology textbook written in psychological, uh, the title is Psychological Science. It was written by Mark Krauss and Daniel Quartz, re recently published, so it's got the latest and greatest of uh, research in psychology, but for our purposes, it uh, illustrates what are the major topics in psychology. And I'm going to go through a number of these topics and, and uh, show you how each of them is highly relevant to music and the psychology of music. One of the early chapters is on what's called biological psychology, or uh, might also be called behavioral neuroscience, which is concerned about how the brain mediates behavior and psychological experience. And that's of great interest uh, to uh, scientists in the psychology of music. People are, are keenly interested in how the brain represents musical experience, what parts of the brain are activated and how. And they're also keenly interested in how musical training actually rewires the brain. It turns out musical training rewires the brain in ways that are quite similar to how uh, the brain gets rewired following uh, brain injuries such as stroke or, and so on. Uh, we need to kind of move along, so I'd love to talk about each of these topics in some detail, but we're not going to get through all of them. If, uh, get, so this is just by way of a, a teaser, an appetizer. The next chapter is on sensation and perception, which has to do with sensor, sense organs, and certainly uh, the auditory system is uh, critical for music perception and how, the, how we perceive music depends on how our, our ears and um, the neurons connected to our ears <laughs> process auditory cues. So that's quite relevant to music. Uh, chapter six is concerned with mechanisms of learning. And of course, uh, there are all kinds of things involved, involving learning that uh, con uh, c concern music. There is a great deal of uh, learning involved in learning to master a musical in instrument. Of course, there are lots of other thing, aspects about music that uh, uh, are involve learning. And uh, the significance of the melody often is a function of learning and so on. Next chapter has to do with memory. Uh, psychologists who study memory have come to recognize that much of the process that determines whether we remember something has to do with organization. And of course, memory mechanisms uh, play a critical role in uh, musical performance. You'll notice that I don't memorize much music and have, and have a music stand uh, available when I perform. But we'll talk about what goes into memorizing musical uh, segment, you know, musical pieces. Uh, chapter 8 is concerned about thought and language. The, uh, these topics are also emphasize the nature of how orga uh, information is organized. Uh, and uh, scientists have drawn lots of parallels between uh, music and language. In fact, uh, there have been suggestions that the evolution of uh, musical uh, uh, skill or, or uh, musicality or interest in music is related to the evolution of, of language because language involves uh, words whose significance is derived from how they're organized and it, uh, of course perception of language also involves uh, syllables and phonemes and so forth and so those are the basic elements of language that have to be organized in a particular way for us to derive meaning from it and there's exact parallel to music and musical notes having to be organized for us to be uh, able to derive enjoyment from a sequence of musical uh, notes. 
Uh, chapter 9 is devoted to intelligence, aptitude, and cognitive abilities. Historically, there's been a great deal of interest in whether uh, musical training produces a general enhancement of IQ or general enhancement of cognitive abilities. Uh, that uh, notion has pretty much been abandoned in, uh, in recent times, but music involves uh, pretty highly skilled uh, uh, cognition based on temporal and spatial information. I mean, the notes on a keyboard are arranged in space. That's the spatial organization. On any instrument, notes are arranged in space. And of course, notes occur across time. So and there's a great deal of, uh, of skill involved and, and cognitive mechanisms involved in, in musical performance and perception that uh, depend on spatial and temporal organization. And uh, musical training does seem to provide a more general uh, increase in uh, level of those kinds of skills, even though it doesn't produce a general uh, improvement in intelligence. But the whole notion of uh, uh, general intelligence has come under some fire within psychology. The next chapter is devoted to uh, lifespan development, uh, which uh, looks at special psychological issues that uh, are evident in, uh, in newborn and early childhood, as well as in, in uh, late in life as, as you uh, experience cognitive decline uh, of the aged. There's a great deal of interest in music perception in uh, babies and newborns uh, uh, very early in life. And in fact, uh, it turns out uh, newborns and uh, kids three, six months of age are able to perceive musical patterns, which is of considerable interest. And uh, I'm personally interested in what happens uh, with, uh, in relationship to music with old age as I get older. And uh, actually, uh, uh, involvement in music uh, may be one of the uh, types of cognitive activities that can uh, uh, delay cognitive de uh, decline in old age. Uh, chapter 11 here is devoted to uh, motivation and emotion. We wouldn't be listening to music if it didn't evoke emotions. So m music is uh, very frequently used in regulating emotions and uh, in, in changing our moods. So there's a tremendous relationship between music and emotions. Chapter 12 is dev devoted to the study of personality. An interesting uh, uh, new finding is that uh, musical preference is a personality attribute such that when uh, people first encounter one another, if you try to, if you meet someone new and you try to find out what they're like, uh, questions about musical preference are uh, some of the early uh, pieces of information that you would uh, likely try to uh, uh, find out about this new person. Chapter 13 is devoted to psychological dis disorders. Uh, music doesn't tell us much about things like depression and schizophrenia, but there's increasing interest in the use of music uh, in uh, alleviating some forms of, uh, of psychological disturbance. There's a lot of uh, uh, room for research on, on music as a therapeutic uh, technique. Uh, chapter 15 is devoted to social psychology, and uh, music is frequently a part of any social activity that human beings engage in. Uh, whether it's a sports event, and they're often a band out on a field, uh, funerals, weddings, there's always music, religious events. Uh, music is a very much a part of our social traditions and uh, social structures. The other thing that's kind of interesting about um, music, particularly from uh, the standpoint of a performer, is that a lot of music is performed in groups. So there's a lot of social behavior that goes on in, uh, in relationship to musical performance. And um, the last chapter I'm gonna mention here, uh, the book kind of ends with a discussion of behavior and health. And it's titled Health Stress and coping, and certainly uh, music plays a major role in uh, how we cope with stress in our personal uh, daily lives. People often listen to music 
as a way to relax. If I ask my students uh, in, in, in my freshman class uh, who come into class with music uh, in, in, uh, in earphones uh, uh, as they walk around campus and they're constantly plugged in, so to speak, why do you listen to music? Invariably, they, they talk about how it reduces their stress. So uh, there are a lot of aspects of psychology that intersect with musical experience, musical training, and so music and psychology is a, is a, a marvelously a rich arena for interdisciplinary inquiry. Thank you. <laughs>